Picture this. You're locked in the basement of a crack house in Poland with your arms tied firmly around a rusty pipe on the wall. One man, the leader of some kind of organization, enters the room and walks up to you with a phone in his hand. He holds the phone up to his mouth and speaks a few sentences in his native tongue. He then holds it up to your ear. The phone translates his words into English and reads as follows. Greetings, prisoner. We are running an experiment on everyday civilians like you. You will be required to listen to a piece of music continuously for one week in order to earn your freedom. You may select one song of the three you are offered. Do you wish to comply? Terrified, you decide that your best bet is to go along with the proposal. You nod your head in compliance. The man once again speaks into his translator. You can hear a few familiar names amongst his monologue. Once again, the phone reads his words out to you. You've made the right choice. Here are the three songs you may choose from. Grippy by J. Cole, Oppie Day by Lil Mabu, or Wagwan Delilah by Snow Day. Please make your choice now. Your stomach drops. This is certainly going to be a long week. Okay, did I cook with that intro or what? Like, I, I had no idea what to write for an intro, so I just kind of did that. I guess I, I guess it's just a glimpse into my dark, twisted reality. Please shut the fuck up. <laughs> So 2024 has been an interesting year for music. There have been some borderline historical events, like the Drake vs. Kendrick beef, P. Diddy getting outed as a p and Yeet pissing on this beat like it's a bathroom stall. However, there was also a barrage of terrible music being released by many different artists. I felt the sheer amount of musical flops, whether they be uninteresting or straight up unlistenable, warranted a tier list video since no one has done one yet. I'm praying no one makes one while I'm writing this script, because that's happened to me like three times now. Before I get into the actual list, I want to go through some songs that were almost on the tier list but didn't quite make the cut. Not Like Us by Kendrick Lamar. This is the definition of a song that's been played to death. It's gotten so repetitive from how much I've heard it that it's just not fun to listen to anymore. Despite this, there's nothing wrong with it, and by no means is it a bad song. Just an overplayed one. If We Bein' Real by Yeet. I've heard a lot of hate going towards this song lately, and I just don't get it. Sure, it's a bit overplayed on TikTok and Instagram, but I still enjoy listening to this. It's one of the more mediocre tracks from the album it's on, but by no means is it bad. 2093 is Yeet's best album, and there's nothing you can do to convince me otherwise. Million Dollar Baby by Tommy Richmond. This one is kind of the same case as Not Like Us. I've heard a lot of hate towards the song. Yeah, it does get a bit annoying after too many listens, but it's not nearly as bad as the songs we'll be discussing in this video. I do appreciate the unique production and vocals it has. The main issue with the track is how overplayed it is on social media. CS by Lil Uzi Vert. This song is fucking terrible, and it is single-handedly made me dislike Lil Uzi Vert. It's a cover of Chop Suey by System of a Down, one of my favorite bands of all time. Instead of doing a normal cover like a normal person, Uzi Vert just ripped the instrumentals and sang like half of the song with heavy autotune. One of my friends called this the talent show version. Like, my god, I could have made this shit. He doesn't even sing the entire song, he just lets the instrumentals play out after the second chorus. The only thing stopping me from putting this song on the list was that it was released in 2023. I really just wanted an excuse to dog on this human experiment of a song. Was I, was I, too, was I too harsh in that? I'll Look Good When I'm Sober by Lovejoy. This song was requested by one of my subscribers when I asked for ideas for songs to add to the tier list. I gave it a listen and it wasn't anything special, but it wasn't terrible. The main reason this song could qualify as a bad song is the band Lovejoy features domestic abuser and serial nibbler Wilbur Soot. Although the band may have a bad egg in it, this song itself isn't terrible enough to go on the list. Anything by You Know Miles. I think we're all familiar with this guy's shtick by now. His songs are so unlistenably bad that they could all go on here, so I won't put any of them on here to save time. If they did, they'd all definitely go in S tier. That concludes our honorable mentions. Now, let's move on to the tier list. This list won't be in any particular order, and I'll just be talking about the songs as I wrote them in the script. If you think any of these songs are good, that's okay. You may get bullied by your peers, but don't let that put you down. Your opinion is your own, and you should never let others change that. With that being said, Let's move on to our first track of the list. Grippy by J. Cole. J. Cole is 39 years of age, coming up on 40 in a few months. Just keep that in mind as I talk about this song. I'm sure you've all heard someone talk their piece about Grippy by J. Cole, but now it's my turn. When I listen to this song, I feel like I'm being groomed. This came out during the beginning of the Drake vs. Kendrick beef, shortly after Cole had backed out of the feud. Just as people were saying he saved his career by doing this, he pulled a 180 and dropped this 
thing. This comment on the lyric video sums up the situation perfectly. Even if you ignore the awful main chorus, the song still has some downright horrendous bars. She said she was gay until I slayed. Now she's strictly dickly. Put so good I had an epiphany. Whenever you want it, mommy, you can call me. <laughs> How can you write any of that down with a straight face? The worst part is this shit goes on for four minutes. The instrumentals in production are pretty generic and offer no distractions from the cringingly bad lyrics. I guess the production isn't terrible, it's just bland. The sampled texting noises are a bit annoying though. Overall, the song was pretty funny when it first came out, but now it's just uncomfortable to listen to. I subconsciously played this song in an incognito window when writing this script because I didn't want YouTube's algorithm to think I want anything to do with this. I'm giving this song a C tier, since it isn't that memorable and the only thing really wrong with it is the lyrics. Evil Empire by Lil Mabu. This is a prime example of what we in the business refer to as coworker music. I guess this song wasn't made seriously, but it still has a lot of issues. For one, it's a drill song. Drill is a subgenre of rap music that kind of got old a few years ago. For another, this song is so goddamn annoying. Both Mabu and Didi Osama shout all their bars, which gets gradually more irritating the more you listen. The part of this song you probably all know is Didi hit him with the scream. Ah which will never not be funny. I know this song is probably satire, but it feels like it's trying way too hard to sound tough. The whole song is about shooting people in mass, which I know for a fact Lil Mabu has never done. The guy looks like Timothy Chalamet and went to a private school in New York. Get that mop the dead ops bullshit out of here, bro. The song also has some questionable bars, like DD better pull out when I ride. Overall, this song is goofy, but the scream bit is the only really memorable part of the song. I'll be putting it in D tier, since the world would probably not be much different if this never released. We could go ban for ban. For a British drill song, this one isn't terrible. Though it is still hard to listen to without hearing We Could Go Gat For Gat in my head. I was contemplating not including this one on the list, but then I remembered one crucial detail. Central C is British. Not only is he British, but he is a British rapper. Not just any British rapper, but he is a WHITE British rapper. He is from a shitty part of London though, so that last part is excusable. The song features Lil Baby, who I don't personally care for, but he did alright on this track. Overall, it's not that bad of a song by any means, maybe a bit overplayed. The song is going in D tier since there isn't really that much to say about it. It's the eye of the road, man got the ups in my sight. Something, something on your block, I'm gonna find you. Keeping with the theme of British drill music, we have a song that is very uniquely bad in a way that's hard to pin down. Eye of the Road Man is a drill cover of Eye of the Tiger by Survivor. Although Luke Day is a joke rapper and dubs himself British You Know Miles, this song is a completely different level of bad from anything You Know Miles has ever made. It's not poorly produced by any means. Hell, the song itself isn't even that poorly written. It's just the idea and delivery of it that's so hilariously bad that it deserves a spot on this list. Luke Day has a bunch of songs exactly like like this, such as Mandem Style and Roadman's Paradise, which are equally bad drill parodies of popular songs. I just chose Eye of the Roadman because I thought it had the funniest chorus. I think what separates Luke Day from You Know Miles is that Luke actually tries with his songs. They don't violently assault your ears like You Know Miles songs do, they just gently caress them without asking permission. I'm putting this one in B tier since it is pretty funny, but not quite notable enough to make it anywhere higher than that. I'm in the thick of it, everybody knows. They know me where it snows, I see A's and they they, that's not how the song goes. This is probably the one you've all been waiting for, the magnum opus of bad music from this year. And yet another entry from the UK, surprise surprise. Thick of It is a song that genuinely confuses me. Like why the hell was this song even made? This song came out when KSI was already making a fool out of himself online with his one-sided beef with Dan TDM. He then decided, you know what, I should drop this song right now, because YouTubers making music is historically known as a good idea. This song is like Gen Alpha's version of It's Every Day Bro. It's Every Day Bro at least had some charm in how stupid it was. This song is so bland and corporate that it's just hard not to laugh at, with a backing beat that sounds straight out of a medicine commercial. That paired with KSI's weirdly immature response to the hate makes this a very memorable moment in the 2024 timeline. I'm giving this song an A tier ranking. Although there's nothing offensive about it, it's still a cringingly flavorless and overconfident track that is too goofy to be taken seriously. Watch it like in Toronto City. 
see, I'm 10,000 kilometers away, but girl, tonight you look so bad, oh yes you do. Oh my days, fam. This right here is the very song that inspired me to make this video. We've all heard about it, but I just can't not talk about it. You know Miles could not come up with something this uniquely bad. Luke Day was close, but he still couldn't make anything this shit. This song is so nuanced in its shitness that I feel like it almost takes talent to come up with something this shit. In case you've been living under a rock, here's a little background info. During the height of the Drake vs. Kendrick Lamar beef, Drake, God knows why, decided to drop as a feature on this steaming garbage pile. Wagwan Delilah is a Canadian-themed cover of Hey There Delilah by The Plain White Tees, complete with weird slang and a heavy Toronto accent. Not only are the vocals incredibly irritating, but there's many parts of the song that just don't make any sense as to why they're even there. Some of the bars don't rhyme. Sometimes Snow Day goes offbeat. There's one part where he just starts rattling off the names of different banks in the middle of the main chorus. And then there's the Drake feature, which isn't much better than the rest of the song. Many people thought it was an AI voice at first, myself included. However, I did some research and found that Drake is following Snow Day on Instagram, meaning that he was most likely on this track, or at least knows about it. I've also discovered that Snow Day is not some weird underground rapper, but is actually an Instagram comedian who makes Canadian parody videos in the same vein as this song. He even did a live performance of Wagwan Delilah where he doesn't seem to take it too seriously. Honestly, finding out this song was a joke felt like finding out Santa Claus wasn't real. It's still pretty funny, and probably my favorite bad song to come out this year, if not ever. Which is why it's going in S tier. Sun is up, super hot, hitting all the p- Jesus Christ, is this guy okay? This isn't a song, this is a fucking medical event, like I can't even commentate- What is this? I'm putting this song in F tier because the male singer dances like a fucking grandpa. These hoes be so fake, they're trying to get played. Something, 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 and me, 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 me. Lil Mabu has done the impossible and dropped not one, but two songs worthy of this tier list. Congrats. This song is like the American version of Wagwan Delilah. It's a gang violence themed cover of Bad Day by Daniel Powder. This whole song is just so stupid that it's funny. I'm listening to a rich white kid sing about killing his ops over these sad but hopeful instrumentals. The contrast between the lyrical content and the melody here makes Oppie Day an incredibly confusing song. Like, when does he want us to play this? You can't blast it in your car because it's not energetic enough, but you can't play it at a funeral because it's about shooting people. At the beginning of the song, he says, It's all about keeping the pace, Lil Mabu's first priority, and then proceeds to sing about chasing people in the streets and gunning them down. I get that this song is a joke, but I just don't get why anyone would take the time to make this. I'm putting it in A tier because the song is pretty funny and decently memorable compared to some of the other shit that's come out this year. <laughs> Let's look at the stats. I've got the facts. My money like Lizzo, my pockets are fat. <laughs> why so serious? <laughs> <laughs> in theory, I could put all of Tom McDonald's music on here, but this song stands out in particular. For those of you who don't know, Tom McDonald is a Canadian rapper who likes the US a little too much. He's mostly known for rapping about his conservative beliefs. Despite some of the controversial opinions he expresses in his songs, people mostly clown on him for being a massive fucking cornball. This guy sounds like Imagine Dragons if they were slightly racist and did rap music. He sounds like Eminem if he was the go ahead and cancel me guy from Fortnite. Cancel me all you want? I don't think you should be on this freaking darn game if you don't have a microphone. You can cancel me for that, I don't care. It's just my opinion, go ahead and cancel me. No one gives a f Now most of his songs sound exactly the same, but as I said earlier, this one stands out. It has a feature from right-wing commentator Ben Shapiro. Yeah, that guy raps over this. I wish I was kidding. Despite Ben Shapiro's many controversial beliefs, he says a whole lot of nothing on this track. In fact, he has the most tame verse in the entire song. His part feels less like a feature and more like some kind of weird humiliation ritual. Hearing the dude's nerdy ass voice saying stuff like, homie I'm ethic is just pure comedy. Other than Shapiro's verse, the rest of the song is just Tom going, I'm offending you right now and I don't care. I'll put the song in D tier because there's not really anything memorable about the song outside of the feature. Bomb, 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 I'm the bomb, bomb. Oh god, I hated that so much. While I'm sure Northwest has a thriving future in the music industry, this one is not it. This song might have single-handedly made Vultures 2 worse of an album, and that's saying a lot. There's not really much to say about this song, the beat just kinda sounds like a cheap knockoff of Just Wanna Rock by Lil Uzi Vert, and the vocals are kind of annoying. I'm guessing the lyrics were written by North herself, which is sweet and all, but doesn't make the song much better. To add icing on the cake, there was a live performance of this song that features You Know Fucking Miles. It's my on my Cheetos, baby. Why my feet smell like Fritos? 
tacos, baby. Do you want some tacos, baby? I'm not Superman, I cannot save you. All jokes aside, I find it genuinely impressive and inspiring how this dude managed to work all the way up from being an underground rapper to getting featured on a Kanye song just by being annoying. I know I said I wouldn't put any of his songs on this list, but this one was a feature, so I'll let it slide. I'm putting this song in D tier because the regular studio version isn't all that special or memorable. It's just kind of annoying. Trying to cancel me, yeah, Gen Z me, bruh. You trying to cancel me, yeah, Gen Z me, bruh. You trying to cancel me, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, these, these, these segments are starting to take a toll on me. I'm not the biggest Eminem fan, but I never really understood the hate towards this track. Sure, it's corny, but it's the fun kind of corny. It's stupid, but it's the fun kind of stupid. It got that classic Eminem charm with unnecessarily edgy lines that feel like they were only included to make the song flow better. May not be age appropriate, but I will hit an eight-year-old in the face with a participation trophy. For some reason, a lot of the older Eminem fans started defending this song with their lives, even though no one was really saying anything about it. This is probably the reason why the song was getting hate. Other than that, I feel like the song is just kind of there. There's nothing really good or bad and nothing that makes it stand out, so I'm putting it in C tier. Moving on. You think you the shit, bitch? You're not even the fart. Gra. <laughs> this song is a perfect example of style over substance. Ice Spice is a musical phenomenon that has no easy explanation. She just kind of appeared and started dropping songs that pretty much got her famous overnight. I've never heard of someone that actually listens to her music, and I feel like she only got famous through social media. Moving on to the topic of the song, what even is this? It feels so low effort, I, I could probably make this if I wanted to. The main chorus doesn't even make any sense. The thank you the shit bar sounds like something you would come up with at 2 in the morning thinking it's heat, and then look over it again in the morning and be like, what the fuck was I on? This song feels like the Hawk Tua meme where it's so bad that it's not even ironically good, which makes it funny. In this case, however, it's not really that funny at all. I'm putting the song in F tier because it's annoying, it's unfunny, and it doesn't really bring anything to the table. Harm. I'm not even gonna sing this one for the segment, I don't even want to. This song is kind of like the girl version of Thick of It. It's not exactly as memorable as Thick of It, but it gives off the same energy. They're both corporate sounding pop songs written by 2010's YouTube stars about their experiences with fame that feel like they're trying to make a statement but aren't really saying anything. The difference with Karma is that it feels like Jojo Siwa is trying to provoke her audience, whereas KSI did it unintentionally with his song. This fact makes it less funny and more obnoxious. It feels less like a goofy song and more like a washed up child star's desperate attempt to stay relevant. In fact, that's kind of the whole point of this song. I noticed that around the time of this song's release, people were relentlessly bullying Jojo Siwa. But as of recently, I haven't heard her name mentioned at all. Seems like this attempt to stay relevant has failed. Better luck next time, Jojo. I'm putting this song in D tier because the memes about it were kind of funny, but the song itself isn't anything special and feels more irritating than funny, which I'm pretty sure was the point. Go, 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 go. That's so good she on a roll. She ride a hand like a carnival on a Fortnite festival. Huh? This song is the perfect blend between being annoying and overplayed. The hook is catchy, but beyond that, the song isn't that good, and some of the lyrics are very questionable, especially in Kanye's verse. Despite these criticisms, the song is still iconic, and it's so stupid that it's kind of funny. Whenever I hear it play in public, I can't keep a straight face. At my school's homecoming dance, our fuck-ass DJ played this song three different times. I wish I was joking. Ye thought this song was so good that he made a second version of it in Vultures 2 called Fried, which came packaged with this spectacular music video. I'm putting the song in B tier because while it is kinda goofy now, I could see myself listening to this song back when it first dropped and enjoying it, even with its flaws. Mango, 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 boom, uh, uh, mango, mango, boom. Oh, that's a whole different song, wait. While I could put any funk song here, I decided to choose Sonic.exe because, to me, it represents a certain kind of funk music that I just do not understand. Back when this genre was first starting to emerge, I thought of it as house music but slowed down and distorted. It wasn't my cup of tea, but I could see why it had such a big following. But recently, I've been hearing songs like Sonic.exe that just don't make any sense. The song is mostly just distorted grunting noises over incredibly bass-boosted drums and repetitive samples. It feels like it's trying to be as annoying as possible. Somehow, though, there are people that listen to this. I've never actually heard of a real person that enjoys this music, but I believe they're out there. As of lately, the funk scene has become more of a joke, with people mostly listening to it ironically or to make fun of those who actually do. I'm putting this song in B tier because it feels like the Sigma Funk Those Who Know shtick will never not be funny. However, this particular song isn't very memorable in any way and kind of blends together with the other funk songs. Last and least is Field Trip by Kanye West. 
This is Kanye's third entry on the list and the second song from Vultures 2 to make it on the list. He's really got to get his act together. So many people watching this like you might be thinking, why is this song on the list? It wasn't that bad. To which I would agree, there's nothing really bad about the song. It's a bit mediocre compared to Kanye's other work, but there's nothing really wrong with it. Until we get to the later half of the song. At this point in the track, it samples the song Machine Gun by Portishead, which is a song I listened to and liked even before Field Trip came out. However, I'm sad to say that Kanye and his producers have thoroughly fumbled the bag with this sample. They could have done something cool with it, like have it as a recurring break in the song, or have it signal a total shift. Instead, it just abruptly starts playing in the middle of the third verse, while Kodak Black drops some of the most disgusting bars I've ever heard. It's nitpicky, but it just bothers me that this song could have been interesting, but ended up being weirdly paced and graphically sexy for no reason. I'm putting the song in F tier because it's just a disappointment to me. Not even Don Tolliver could save this one. So there you have it, the definitive worst songs of 2024 tier list. I hope you all enjoyed this video, I know I enjoyed making it. If you want to see more tier list videos like this, do let me know in the comments. Make sure to like and subscribe, and if you really like me, join my channel's membership starting at just only two bucks a month. It helps out a ton and makes my life much easier. Shout out to Quickie Hub for being our channel's first and only member. With that, the video is over and I hope you have an amazing rest of your day. Peace out.